will admit that he's having the, the same problem that I had. Good morning, good evening, or good night to all of our attendees today. Welcome to the global introduction of the EVO series, the evolution of a sealless design process pump. Our goal is to, that during this session today, you will learn how this technology can evolve your fluid transfer process. Our speakers today will be Edna Celestinos, Global Product Manager at Aero. She has five years of experience within Ingersoll RAN along with Thomas Mapelli, our European Regional Product Manager for the electric pumps with 10 years of experience at Ingersoll RAN. So at this time, I'm gonna hand this off to Edna and let her begin the presentation. And I hope you learn a lot today. Thank you, Kawani, for the introduction. I also want to introduce uh, uh, David Rosso, our Product Manager for Americas. Uh, and he will also be collaborating with us in this webinar. Uh, so once again, welcome everybody. Uh, my name is Edna Salustiano. I will conduct the presentation all together here with Thomas Mapelli. Uh, please, you can use uh, our chat if you have any questions and we will answer the question and clarify, clarify the information during the course of this presentation, okay? Um, I want to, to present here uh, the proposal agenda for today. Uh, first, uh, we will go to the importance of selecting the right technology for a specific application, going through the fundamentals of a traditional manufacturing process versus a process control manufacturing. Then we will introduce the latest Aero launch design for complex application process, the benefits and features associated tied to their respective economic value, uh, and finalize the presentation. We will go through some real applications example, and finally our Q&A section. Uh, I wanted to show you here uh, the overall ecosystem where uh, we can basically divide it two main categories, right? The general or basic application and or process control. Uh, in most cases, we have multiple example in industry of application that run under a traditional general application conditions that follow some key factors to select equipment for process. So aspects like environmental impact, chemical and physical properties, efficiency, reliability are determinants for the success of a manufacturing process. For basic applications, aid in the manufacturing of an item or items usually carried out on a very large scale. On the other hand, we have the process control that is used to maintain a product's desired chemical composition and properties. And it's important to analyze the level of complexity involving the, for this application that normally are followed by high value added materials and involve a significant amount of resource that basically uh, is the reason for these applications to require a constant control and constant equipment updates, new manufacturing flow ideas and equipment downtime reduction. So when we face to into this main manufacturing process, both are really important for a success of operation or the process efficiency that you can see here in the intersection of both, right? Uh, so uh, this is the, the the very important two additional elements to be considered when selecting a parameters for equipment acquisition. It's important to emphasize when we talk about pumps, they are also have their categories, right? There are pumps which designs are focused for general application or doesn't require levels of controls or these pumps 
aren't part of the manufacturing process themselves. And there are pumps which designs are made to be considered elements as part of the manufacturing process and have to follow the same restricted high parameters associated to this. That basically gives me the chance to link uh, to the next slide, uh, talking about the importance of a pump selection in a production process. Uh, we basically know that all pumps, no matter their designs, are made to move fluids from point A to point B. With this said, we start to see the difference between basic pumps and process pumps in other elements that make these pumps more special, like the ability to move some solids or viscous fluids pumps that are resistant to corrosion, abrasiveness, and aggressive fluids, and especially to these pumps that are designed to run under a heavy, dirty manufacturing cycles that normally are applications that needs to run above 12 hours or a con on, a, on, on a continuous dirty range. In most cases, running 24 hours a day, seven days a week. When do we normally see where these applications? They are very common in chemical process industries, wastewater, and other verticals that require complex production process. In other words, it allows the full control of a process. You know? Here, I show you some examples of um, positive displacement pumps that are very popular in the market. But for applications that demand constant flow, even as pressure changes and the ability to move viscous fluids, normally is chosen more positive displacement pump technologies. As most of you know, Ingersoll Rand has a broad portfolio of positive displacement pump technologies that cover almost any type of problems existing in industry. Each technology has its respective benefits. And, and here I want to introduce you a new positive displacement technology that we are called as a only one solution, the EVO series pump. This is the one in the red that you can see. Um, the next slide here you can see You can see our EVO. So this is our brand, uh, uh, the, the design of our pump. Uh, so you can see it's very different from other pumps that you normally see in the market because of our unique design. And the EVO series pump, just to, as a reminder here, it was elected by Pump Industry Awards 2023 for the best design and performance nominated by Best of Industry Awards in partnership with WP Aero GMB. EVO series, it's a pump that it with a brand new technology, you know. So number one, it doesn't leak at all, you know. So why it doesn't leak? Because it have multiple design characteristics that I will explain in the following slides. Uh, but it has a, a, another, I would say, a secondary containment to prevent leaks, or we can say that this is a totally sealless design. Uh, it has the highest efficiency technology in the market, especially nowadays that we are giving more and more importance to products where efficiency and power consumption uh, need to be in constant synergy. So a lot of money uh, can be saved thanks to this. You can also have a full process controllability that um, I emphasize a lot uh, among other technologies available for multiple ways to customize the programming. Uh, pumps, this is a pump that automatically stops when outlet valve is closed. So basically this we, we call as deadhead, you know, when we have a deadhead uh, in our operation, it's when the pump, uh, it's when a valve uh, it's closed. And what are pumps that are able, you know, to detect this event and immediately stops the operation, right? So our design are also uh, uh, developed to, 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 to happen uh, under this event, you know, in an automatic way. And there are much more other benefits associated to this. Uh, now, I want to talk you a little bit more about the economic value added associated to each of these benefits here. 
uh, number one, the no leak. It's a, it's a sealless design. So what does it mean? Sealless design means that there is a pump with no dynamic seals that reduce or eliminate the need for replacement of shaft seals. It has automatic leak detection sensors uh, tied with alarms. So when uh, we identify any rupture in the diaphragms immediately, uh, uh, the operation stops and has these alarms to to see what operations uh, or operator is going to make in terms of decision making. It has uh, exclusive secondary containment. Uh, and here I can show you later in uh, how it works in all these fe features here. Uh, also, because of our sealless design, you can, also, you can also prevent loss of valuable liquids. You can handle multiple uh, hazardous liquids safely, avoid contamination of hazardous fluids to the environment. And of course, associated to all these benefits, you can have a lower maintenance cost. Um, first, I just wanted to, to point here the, men the benefits associated to leak detection. So here, it's um, a CAD uh, design of our fluid section. And here you can see here in the arrow where our leak, pos leak detection is positioned into the pump. So here inside the fluid cap, it's where the fluids uh, are kept. And here immediately there is a link uh, totally tied to the fluid that can automatically identify when there is a diaphragm uh, rupture here in the fluid section part. And here on the external part, you can see where leak detection is positioning. The secondary containment, so we have here in the bottom of the pump, another, I would say, secondary cap uh, that can collect all potential escapes from liquid from the fluid section and also from the PRV system, right? So here you can see uh, as in an external image where our leak uh, secondary containment is located. And here also we have some bellows, you know. So these bellows are positioned between uh, the pistons of each air, each flue chamber here of the pump. So it also helps to present if there is any escape of fluid. In, uh, it helps to protect all hardware, internal hardware of the pump. So this is the, the piece or the part associated to this protection. And also, I just wanted to emphasize some very popular pro problems uh, with pumps that don't have, I would say, this type of protector uh, protection or if don't have secondary containment. So here, two examples, popular existing in centrifugal pumps that, that we have a lot of, I would say, leakage or escapes. And also another example of electric uh, double diaphragm pump with, you know, this type of protections, you know, and even if it has, you know, some leak detection here, it's uh, very clear to identify that leakage escaped and also started to damage all the internal hardware of the system. Uh, before I go to the next slide, I just wanted to ask Thomas, Thomas, feel free if you want to add, uh, to add any compliment to this point. Yeah. Yeah, thank you, Edna. I mean, actually, you've been quite clear. What is important here is really to, to, re, to, to reinforce the fact that no leakage is possible, uh, not even on the mechanical side, not even on the environment. I mean, the combination of diaphragm design, which is already existing on diaphragm pump, plus the bellow behind the diaphragm and the leak detector are really preventing to have any type of contamination. This is quite important for me, uh, for any application also out in the field. When we have started installed pumps, this was a very important added value uh, for, for end users to recognize that this pump do not have any type of leakage. Also in terms of cleaning and maintenance, this is a very big advantage because there is no need of cleaning outside. And in terms of maintenance, um, in place, there is no contamination of the environment when we do maintenance of the pump. Apart, of course, small residual that are on, on, on the fluid side. This is, this is 
part of the of the of the game. Yeah, thank you, thank you very much, Thomas, for the collaboration here. Uh, I want to go to our next, uh, I would say, economic value added or benefits associated to this new technology. Um, this in the gra in the graphic below, and here you can see our features associated to high performance and efficiency. You know, so this technology allow us to to reach a global efficiency up to 72%. This is global power electric requirement, uh, wire to fluid, you know? So it does not only means <coughs> that this, this efficiency is only tied to a, a specific equipment like uh, the electric motor. So it's tied to the whole, I would say system, right? Uh, one of the lowest uh, kilowatt costs of the market that you can see here in the graph. So it also gives us uh, the opportunity to provide lower return on investments uh, uh, for our offering versus other uh, technologies. Here you can see in the graphic the, the difference between our pump. So Evo pump is this one that you can see here in the red uh, graphic here. Uh, the And here in the X axles, you can see here the flow rate in gallons per minute or liters per minute. Here in the I, uh, Y axle, you can see the level of efficiency in percentage. And here, each color represents a new uh, 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 type of technology, positive displacement technology, even considering a centrifugal pump. Okay, so compared to other technology, you can see here how superior uh, this uh, new pump is versus others, you know. And of course, you can say, uh, oh, I, I know that depending on the technology, you can have or maintain level of efficiencies uh, in other technologies too. But it basically always, always depends on each uh, uh, type of application. But in, in general, you know, in most, uh, I would say in almost all parts or all points here on the curve, you can see uh, that EVO series has um, has shown here. This is a real test uh, put into into our laboratories that you can see the difference versus the other technologies, right? Uh, on the right side, you can also see uh, a graphic. Uh, and this graphic we run into uh, uh, one example, you know, uh, and this one you can see here on the right, uh, we have, I would say, an example of uh, an application. This application uh, under uh, ambient temperature and ambient pressure flow rates around 100 GPM, that means 300 and 80 liters per minute with an outlet pressure around 50 PSI or three bars. Uh, it's a, it's a eight hour day operation, you know, the recycle eight to, yeah, eight to seven hours day of operation, 220 days a year. And the kilowatt cost here, considering this exercise is 10 cents, $10 cents. So based under these conditions, you can see the real difference between uh, another type of pump, another pump technology here. Uh, we used an AODD, two inch AODD versus a two inch EVO pump. And the amount of kilowatts required, again, global electric power required kilowatts versus what we have on EVO is very, the, the, the comparison, the difference is very high. So EVO can also here, can go up to six times less than another pump running in the exact same condition. When we convert this to uh, annual cost, you know, so here you can see the real difference in terms of dollars, right? So here in one year uh, operation, uh, the air pump would cost 4.6k dollars versus uh, 700 dollars a year, right? So if you can multiply this versus two years, uh, three years, you know, you can see a huge, you know, gap difference in terms of dollars uh, spent here. So here, these two difference uh, represents almost 4k, uh, 4,000 dollars, you know, 
just considering the energy efficiency here associated. So here you can see that the difference is very high. Uh, I want to go to our next uh, benefit here, which is associated to that head. And again, when we talk about true that head, it means that other pump technologies also are, I would say, advertising about that head. But that head for us means a lot in terms of safety, you know. So our that head protect the pumps and process. It has automatic uh, pump uh, uh, motor stops when a valve string is closed. At the same time, holding torque uh, indefinitely, you know. It also has uh, an alarm indication. The pump is in the standby position, waiting for uh, operator command, and it's in. It's integrated with a controller and encoder to promote a higher, uh, I would say, accuracy of data information, you know. So pumps without having these, um, this type of features can suffer a lot of, I would say, problems in terms of fluid loss, pump and motor damage because of the peak of pressure, you know, uh, multiple maintenance down times, and of course, uh, more maintenance costs. And more important uh, unsafe conditions. So that's the point that we want to emphasize. And here we have a video uh, there. You can show more or less uh, what we are trying to explain with this. So here you can see, here you can see the motor spinning and then when we close the valve immediately, it's uh, less than one second, you know, the pump stops immediately. And here, when we have the valve reopened again, so it will start the operation again. So this is very interesting to show you, and it's even more interesting when you can see this in life. And here, stopping again and restarting again. Um, Thomas, uh, you want to comment, complement something here? I mean, <clears throat> no. I mean, the, the video is self-explaining. Uh, the the pump ex did had exactly like a diaphragm pump does if you want to to make it this simple um i take the opportunity to answer also by voice to a question that came in the in the chat maybe you will see already the answer but so someone asked me uh how a pump perform when there is debris or solids on the fluid and actually the pump can handle solid solids exactly like an AODD can. The, the fluid side is very similar, I would say identical. So uh, whatever are the solids, as they can go through the bowl checks, they can be handled. And the way the pumping system is very smooth and gentle, so cannot just hand solids, but if those solids are like uh, fragile and we don't want to damage those, like englobations, uh the pump do not destroy the solids inside uh that just to 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 complement this uh, to 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 the question the question I, we, we received and uh, there is a, also a very another important point to emphasize because the time here counts a lot you know even uh when we have pumps uh uh promoting oh we have uh, a pump can deadhead Okay, but pump can that head in how many seconds, you know? It is immediately, it is after five seconds or 10 seconds or 30 seconds, you know? So this, each second represents a lot here because each second can represent a peak. I would say, uh, you can, can you imagine that amount of uh, a lot of pressure associated uh, 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 pressure in the system, you know? and the time that takes to the motor to slow down and it stops immediately. So this, this time, you know, between the dead head is started up till the dead head is completed, you know, the dead head phase is completed, takes 
a lot, means a lot, you know. So it means this between this time, this unsafe condition that I told you. So that's why we wanted to show this video because here you can see which is, uh, you know, uh, the, the dead head here it starts in less than one second uh, because this can protect all pump and process uh, a, a very effective, you know, so we won't have all the har uh, hardwares or, you know, premature wear components associated to this uh, time, time remaining time between when motor stops uh, immediately, right? Um, I wanted also to, to put you in another, I would say, benefit that we have here. So a lot of operations today cares a lot about a smooth operation, you know? So what does it mean smooth operation? It doesn't mean that uh, the fluid, how gentle the pump, uh, the, the fluid it's put in the, into our operation, uh, also with other integrated benefits like reduced noise and vibration, you know, uh, there is a hardware conversation here, higher flows, and what are the problems that we can solve uh, with high pulsation, you know, so you can avoid splash, which can demand or can uh, give us more, I would say, quality issue, the, especially depending on the type of fluid that we are pumping, ergonomic issue because of noise, the chemical properties modification, especially uh, when we are dealing with high sensitive fluids, fatigue of piping and other components associated to the system, and a lot of extra accessories, you know, that normally are required if a smooth operation is required, as an example, a purchase of uh, pulsation dampeners. So here you can see two graphics, one associated to a three chamber design because they, this new technology is built on a three chamber, you know, versus others that you can see in the market that are built in two chambers, you know. So here you can see, you know, uh, this graphic here shows our outlet manifold performance test here in PSI. Here we cross a line around 120 PSI more or less. And here you can see how gentle the fluid uh, is pumped into the pump versus the I would say the movement or the high choking movement that the pump has in an other, I would say, type of um, uh, designs, you know. And here I can show you one video. This is one video using um, air operated pump that I wanted to show you here. So here you can see how the pulsation works. So it's a very high pulsation here. And this pulsation also, also uh, correlates or goes to all the piping systems. So I will put once again to you to see the piping system also vibrating because of the pulsation. Here you can see the vibration. And here there is um, an example using uh, the EVO series technology so in a filling application. So if you can see here, you can also, you, you, you basically don't have any splash associated here in each can filling. It's a continuous can filling application, you know. So this is basically how our pulsation works based on our design, you know. So this design, it's under patent, you know, process, you know, because it has been performed in a very differential way. Okay, and uh, last topic here. Uh, as you know, uh, now, especially with the uh, trends associated to IoT, you know, uh, IoT industry 4, 4.0, so, all, I, I believe that now the importance of the, the connectivity, it's very, very important to our industry, right? So um, we can offer a full integration uh, to any program logic controller or a PLC interface, different options of pro communication protocols or protocol communications like Profibus, uh, Profinet, Modbus, uh, Ethernet, you know, so uh, with all 
basically all communication protocols are ready to be to, to read under this application. Digital, uh, additional digital ports and ana analog ports as well are uh, available to install uh, complementary uh, equipment. And also there is a scan for services, you know, so each pump will have, uh, will have with an individual care code and it's an easier way to identify and request for services, tex technical support, or also service kits uh, associated to the pump that the customer uh, is acquiring. It's a faster way to get in touch with our Aero uh, sales representative and also our customer support. This is also thanks to our integrated uh, system, you know, so as system, it's built with our encoder and also a, v uh, a special VFD integrated to the system. Uh, we are able to have all this programming, but of course, the full also to provide a full level of uh, controllability uh, and stability to the system. Uh, with all that said, we want uh, I want also to uh, summarize. Uh, uh, the the economic value added with this matrix here, uh, where it shows the other positive displacement technologies, and here all the pumps attributes. So, uh, depending on your application needs, you know, let's suppose that you have an application that really needs to have a, a leak detection. Okay, so what are other technologies that provides leak detection and others that don't provide? Okay, you can see. Uh, what are the technologies that can run dry? and others that cannot run dry, you know? Uh, or also one of the questions that was answered by, by Thomas. So is this, pump, is this pump capable to move uh, viscous uh, fluids or a percentage of solids or abrasive fluids? Yes, others cannot, others can, but what are the pumps that can put all those benefits together, you know? So that, that's basically our intention, you know, to, to design a premium solution pump, uh, even for the most exigent or heavy dirty applications, you know? And also there are more high pressure up to 120 PSI or 8.3 bars, high inlet pressure 60 PSI or four bar, bar. Uh, this pump, because of the footprint, it's also available to have the maintenance in place versus other pumps. Uh, we know that depending on the pumps, uh, uh, we, we need our maintenance group needs to disassemble the pump, to go to the body shop, repair, or need extra space to make the maintenance, you know, so this, this pump, it's very easy to disassemble and make everything without the need to detach uh, the pump. Uh, from the operation, it's that's why, uh, with all these benefits together, we are called this pump as all-in-one solution because of the versatility and other benefits associated to this. Uh, Thomas, before I go to uh, we go to the application examples, do you want to summarize? Uh, okay, so let's go to the uh, our first uh, application here example. So this it's a very success case study that we uh, that we have with our customer uh, a Flint Group. Uh, so a uh, Flint Group it's a very big industry uh, company of the pulp and paper segment for traditional and UV inks. No, so we have a uh, this Evo pump was selected because uh, attended the requirements of for a high level of controllability and data accuracy, safety during that head events, low pulsation for not damage the sensitive UV characteristics, and also to avoid bubbles and splash, as you could see uh, in the video. Right, energy costs associated was also a very, very important point associated to this process. Efficiency uh, during tank loading phase and also the PLC interface, in this case, using PROFNET card uh, language. Uh, because of this rapid return of investment and process productivity acquired, they also recommended the other Flint subsidiaries around the world to use the same uh, technology, the same EVO technology. Uh, so this is a very success case uh, that we have, you know, and now, uh, uh, and also we have, you know, our uh, Flint as one of our biggest par partners, you know, uh, uh, working with us uh, to make 
life better, you know, to make our customers' life better to increase their productivity process here. Uh, the second uh, application that I want to show you, it's a very good uh, example of um, extreme production process. So this is a carbon black, uh, uh, sorry, a cardboard production that requires 24 hours a day operation. And if you consider a 24 hours a day operation consuming high energy, so can you think about how much is the energy cost associated to this operation? So this were basic, uh, was basically the problem uh, faced by this company, you know, so they were uh, thinking uh, to, work, to, to convert to another technology that could, could give to them a better return in terms of energy efficiency. So they produce single phase and double phase layers cardboard simultaneously using corrugating machines that could run at different dirty points. So they need a pump that was able to perform in different speeds with a high level of energy efficiency and reliable to perform at had uh, this uh, high dirty condition. Also, other characteristics were critical as the capability to run visco fluids, in this case, which is glue uh, that could go uh, from 500 centipoise up to 3000 centipoise. You know, they also uh, uh, need a remote monitoring and control and th they wanted uh, a technology that could provide to them uh, easier maintenance and to avoid long downtime and production loss. Okay, so these are, I would say, uh, the observations or the testimonials uh, given uh, to from our customers. So the better flow rate, the corrugating machines with a precise store control, and uh, incredibly, their energy cost savings they got a return on investment in four months. So this is a perfect example of the energy efficiency that we can provide uh, to the customers that it's requiring for this type of benefits. Uh, the, another application that I want to cover here, it's the technology that has been applied for, uh, for powder transfer, you know, so in this case, uh, uh, we are uh, we we have customers that are producing carbon black and also graphite. In this case, it's the carbon black production in a company located in Belgium, right? So this application it's from a carbon black production, which is very common in our lives today. For every product that use lithium battery, like cell phones, electric vehicle cars, so they produce both traditional carbon black and also the thermal carbon black, where high temperatures are applied in the process. So also they incorporate gases, uh, in this case the nitrogen as part of the, the process, the fluid process. So this nitrogen is inserted in the suction, uh, in the suction inlet. So the bottleneck of this application is also the high energy cost associated to this. Almost part of companies now uh, that work under a, a two shifts operation, they are now turning or transforming their operation to run on a third, on a three shifts operation, because as uh, we are aware, the lithium battery in general are increasing a lot, especially because of the demand increasing market for the electrical vehicle cars. So that's why now companies are converted, converting their technologies to a higher efficiency technology using. Uh, using EVO technology. So for powder transfer, not and again, not only for carbon black, but because of uh, our design, it's also suitable to pump other type of products like graphite. So this represents a very good result among other pumps uh, under test. So they also tested other pumps in there in, uh, for this application, but the one that could really um, offer a uh, high level of serviceability and high level of energy savings was the EVO technology. Uh, also, I want to show you another Edna? example. 
Yes. Yeah. Yes. Can Can I just um reinforce the 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 the, the, the carbon black stuff because it may be quite yes. Um, and sorry for interrupting. Uh, it's quite unusual to hear about pumps pumping powder unless you are already familiar with the AODD. So the fact is that the way the AODD is done and did the same for Evo, is that he can move powder, which is fluidized by, as Edna told. So uh, just to reinforce the fact, with this pump, we can pump powder. We got this very good success story with carbon black, but this can be applied also to other powders that um, that could have the characteristic, so the, the enough volatility, let's say, um that allow the pow the powder to be fluidized into the pump so it, it this is quite important to remark because for someone it could be strange so just to reinforce yes we are pumping powder we just need a medium which is could be dry air or nitrogen to fluidize this powder so i know you told already but i just want to reinforce because if people are from fluid uh, they are used to to, to 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 fluid maybe it could 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 seems it's strange so just to reinforce the, the the concept here yeah yeah and thanks for this uh for this heads up thomas it's very very critical and very important and and uh, this part that you uh that you explain it it's uh i would say one of the key success i would say phase uh to have i would say a hundred percent uh, quality uh, approved finished product, right, for carbon black production, especially under thermal, uh, for, for the thermal carbon black. So very good. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, our next example here, uh, it's related to uh, sludge uh, transferring. In this case, uh, there is um, also a pump uh, located in um, in a company in Seattle, United States. It's a large concrete watch out company. Uh, this Evo pumps, as you can see here, operates outdoors in a filter press application, right? So uh, the concrete they collect the concrete residues left over or unused on a filter press machine that requires to run under a variable speed using the torque limit control. So. This operation here, uh, it has uh, to be done remotely because as you can see here, it's an outdoor operation, uh, but the filter press, it's in an indoor uh, area. And uh, what was uh, the final results here? That, let me just put here uh, uh, the video. So we have a, here a video. Right. Um, uh, these uh, the final result here among many benefits uh, associated was the highest uh, uh, energy cost associated to this. Why? Because this pump could convert also an AODD technology pump. So in this case, uh, the cost the the cost uh, additional capex cost associated to buy new air compressors, you know, in this case, it would be necessary to buy two new air compressor and also more um, uh, air operated pumps. So the final gain between one new pump plus two compressors versus one uh, EVO pump resulted in a positive return on investments and of course, lower total cost of ownership as you can see here. And also because of this remote control, the system was also uh, be, was also possible to connect to a PLC interface to avoid manual operation, you know. So this is also a very good result of, um, of an application. And just to uh, emphasize a little bit more the ability to use 
uh, evil technology or on future press uh, because of all reasons uh, that we showed on the previous slide, it's also to emphasize the importance of having the ability to use the maximum feed pressure starting from the very low pressure and increasing the pressure in a stepwise manner, right? So for those who deal with filter press application, you know that this phase, it's very important, you know, depending, depending on the, the viscosity of the material, you know, uh, in order to, I would say, control uh, the cake uh, in the end of the process, right? So this is uh, very important. Uh, the high inlet pressure, the 60 PSI or four bar that also uh, allows the pump to put in series and operate during a cleaning process. So the versatility uh, in terms of material selection to work with different applications uh, uh, enables EVO to use or, or to, to be considered in future press, also because of the automatic leak detection and the heavy dirty uh, capability to on their viscose fluids where uh, we know that normally centrifugal pumps can't perform because of the limitation of handle viscous fluids. Okay, so I just wanted to emphasize this. And um, we also receive uh, very good testimonials of case studies in the ceramics industry because of the um, ability of heavy dirty capability that EVO technology. So it's observed that one of the pain points for the for this type of application ceramics, you know, uh, it's um, uh, associated to the frequent maintenance uh, uh, required, especially associated to replacing spare parts. Uh, uh, frequently. So it also uh, can cause, I would say, some noise in the operation because of the multiple stops that the operation needs to run. And you know that this operation, it's also a, a heavy dirty, it's basically a continuous operation, although it's in a, under, a, I would say, fixed speed, uh, uh, it requires a lot of reliability and uh, uh, heavy dirty capability associated. Uh, here, I also want to, to, to invite you, Thomas, because you have a very good example in Europe of this one and how uh, EVO it's performing in a traditional but heavy dirty application like ceramics. Yes, thank you, Edna. Um, the ceramic case is quite interesting for me. We now have a pump installed uh, since the uh, beginning of the year in a big producer of uh, ceramic sinks uh, in Germany. And uh, this one is performing perfectly. I mean, the, the big advantage that customer has is the pulseless flow. So the, 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 the flow is arriving to the sink molds uh, without any pulsation. So just to, to be clear, the, the, the application is molds filling. So the, the product arrives to the molds without pulsation, which is quite important. And also uh, the maintenance intervals, which are much, much longer than what they were experienced with the previous technology. The pump is also much more efficient. So actually the customer is really happy uh, about this solution. Uh, we are trying to replicate also in other places this, uh, these advantages. And we will publish probably a case study on, on ceramic filling, on ceramic mold filling here. Yeah. And consider that ceramic is very abrasive. So it's a good test for, 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 for this pump for it in terms of application. Yeah, that, that, that's very a good example. Thank you, Thomas, uh, for this one. Uh, and I also wanted to finalize here the application examples uh, uh, saying that uh, the capability of EVO to, to own pressure control in complex systems. So because of our integrated you know, uh, solution, uh, with a high level of data accuracy, you know, so we are also able to perform in, in a lot of complex systems that requires a constant pressure control or a constant uh, con uh, control of the overall operation, right? Um, I just want to finalize here uh, our presentation um, 
presenting here markets where uh, uh, this new technology is available. So it has, you know, what are, I would say, the, uh, with all these characteristics and benefits that you saw here in our examples uh, are presented in most of industries where current technologies can be converted to evil technologies, such as uh, general industry that covers here automotive industry, paints and coatings and inks, uh, in chemical processing, you know, in a lot of application involving abrasive fluids, you know, acids, oils, sludge, etc. Uh, in our poop and paper, you know, especially with sensitive, you know, uh, inks, as you could see in our case study from Flint, Future Press, also in paint manufacturing, again, uh, for pigment dosing, transfer, you know, paints and coatings in general and also for the wastewater. Uh, and here, we put it here, all other competition, you know, uh, technology, because you can see there is uh, always an opportunity to convert these old technologies to new technologies by having, of course, a positive uh, return on investment or a positive total cost of ownership. Uh, with this said, I finalize here the presentation so we can have time enough to cover more uh, questions and doubts that you may have. So before I go to the quick Q&A section, uh, uh, Thomas uh, also just wanted to, to give you final comments here, final remarks. Yes, I take the opportunity to answer a question that is coming on the, on the Q&A. I will take to answer this to all availability of the product we have today yeah here you can see perfect Edna, perfect timing we have today uh, metallic lower end available in stainless steel aluminum and cast iron and we also have polypropylene pump already available for sale at two inch and very soon available on one inch i mean when i speak about plastic so when, when, when I speak about metallic, it's also available at its full ATEX certified. The lower end is exactly the same. The lower end is already ATEX certified if you want, but to get the full pump certification, which is what we are certifying, uh, you need to have an ATEX certified motor. So the red one you see here on the right. So to, to make it, to summarize, three materials of metallic pump, for standard duty and ATEX duty and one material polypropylene and plastic available in one inch and two inch. In terms of internals, we do have diaphragm available in Santoprene and PTFE. Thank you, Thomas. And also to emphasize that we have uh, uh, two international safety um, hazard safety standard one, it's what Thomas indicated, the ATEX, and also we, we have the IECX uh, certification available for our pump package, okay? Uh, to learn more about us, you can visit our website, aerozone.com, or you can scan here using your cell phones, uh, the QR code that you go, that you drive, uh, drive you directly to our website. And once again, I want to thank all of you that joined today's section. Uh, this webinar is uh, it's recorded, so you can revisit the presentation or share uh, the link uh, to other people. And it will also be posted in our website. And if you have any technical or commer commercial questions, so please do not hesitate to contact us or, or through uh, myself, Thomas, uh, we have also Davi, or your sales uh, uh, representative. Okay, so once again, thank you very much and have a good rest of your day or evening. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you everyone for attending. This presentation will also be available on our YouTube channel if you would like to rewatch it. Um, it's...